five seconds. Four, five seconds. Three, two, one. Love Talk Radio. And we're live. Oh, my God. Live on Tower Today Live. That's right. Hey, hey it, it's Veterans Day, everybody. Thank you for your Yay. service. All you veterans out there, just want to get that out of the way at the top here. I'm Dax Carlisle, and I got my fabulous co-host, Mary Brown. But we're hey, really lucky today because we've got Pamela Steele. Oh, my God. God. Let me tell Yay. you. Let me tell you about Pamela Steele. Oh my God. Okay, so she's a, an artist and deck creator, tarot teacher, author, certified tarot master, member of the Tarot Guild board. <laughs> um, I know I'm forgetting stuff. It, it, a decent cook. I'm a decent. A decent cook. cook. Yeah, we could go on forever, you know. But a we belly dancer. <laughs> oh yeah, a belly dancer. Don't forget that. But you know. We thought we'd have Pamela on because the third edition of the Steel Wizard, it's out, folks. Oh, Yay. my God. And look at this box. I mean, I would just get it just for the box. I, you know, I don't care what's inside. I just want the box. It's, it's gorgeous. Look at that. Pamela Steel, Steel Wizard Tarot. It's the third edition, the language of the soul. And isn't it, though? Yes. Isn't it though? Well, welcome to the show, Pam. We're so glad you could join us. Thank you. Thank you so much for yeah. having me here. This, this is, is awesome. Be fun. This is going to be fun. So, so, just so you could see, <laughs> look at how many extra cards are in the Steel Wizard this time. There's ten. The same number, and that's what okay. gets me. I don't know what because I have the cards... original, you know, and I was wondering. Well. Here's the second edition. And when you look, without dropping them, when you look, wow. They've used a completely different cardstock. There's just phenomenal. This is a substantial cardstock. I'm just gonna it say it is. There's and the match, really. everybody. Can you see the but box? I will say this too? What I discovered when I pulled them out of the box, I thought even my hands aren't that big. But what I've been doing is taking half the deck, shuffling half the deck shuffling and then splitting them again and i'm just shuffling them part at a time and then that way you take say this many and you start i you don't read with reversals i do but i flip and turn them every time and then oh okay they're so much easier to shuffle they shuffle like a dream if you don't have quite that many so i know yeah, i know some people, that. some people do the up and down too uh yeah so, and so they're again, shuffling just, sideways they shuffle up and down yeah just take and that would work I'm really you know? clumsy doing that but yeah half the deck is way easier and you can just keep going until that's how i got them actually all mixed up in and ah there's one of my girls um and actually shuffled to, to where i felt comfortable using them so yeah and now they feel seasoned again yes takes a while <laughs> absolutely yeah okay. and, and if you have a, a nice big spray cloth you can just push it all out mix it up do the chaos method and bring it back together in into a, a, the deck that's an easy or way to a big you can deck. walk into a room holding them like so trip scatter them all scatter over them all over the floor well but and then try 52 to card them. pick up <laughs> yeah well 88 card pick up and yeah okay. and then you're sitting at, at 87 thinking where did that last one hide but yeah, it was a miscount. It wasn't. I was missing. <laughs> oh, but wow. don't, I don't recommend it. I really don't. <laughs> so real quickly, I want to mention Jason is in the chat room. Michelle Metheny, one of our fabulous. Hey, everybody. Members. Yellow's in there, too. Ooh. So and everybody's going happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day. Hi, Pam. Happy Veterans Day. Hello. That's awesome. That's awesome. And we have some people starting to get on the phone lines here. And you can cool. call the show too. 714-816-4628. As soon as you get through, 
press the one on your dial pad. That'll let us know you want to be live on air with us. If you can't call in today, join us in the chat on the YouTube live. Just go over to our YouTube channel, Tarot Today Live. It's that at sign Tarot Today Live. Yep. And you can just pop in there and you can get in the chat room. You can ask in the chat room, right, Mary, for a reading or questions. Yes, they can. You can ask for a mini reading. If you don't have a specific question, you can just say, pull a card for me, please. You don't have to ask if you can ask for a reading. Mm -hmm. You don't have to take a number. There's no line, no waiting. We take them in the number that, you know, in the order that they appear. And, you know, when Dax sees them. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> but and also um but that's just for general readings also you can ask a specific question too or you don't even have to ask for a reading if you have a question for our guest today pam about making the deck if we don't get to you know the question you want you wanted us to ask mm -hmm. you know then go ahead and pop in something you want to know about either the deck or or pam in her life <laughs> yeah. ask really intense personal questions no <laughs> don't do that <laughs> but also you can ask about the tarot guild you can ask about tarot reading tarot cards crystals and all kinds of stuff like ask us anything we have three knowledgeable people here which surely we can answer your question <laughs> so, yep absolutely I was just sent Pam was in the in the background asking me for the link to the YouTube. So there's the link, Pam, if you want to jump in the chat. Uh well, push. that's kind of what I'm looking for. Uh yeah, if, there we go. Hey. Yeah. Woo. Make sure you turn the sound off on that tab, otherwise you're gonna get a feedback loop, just so you know. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, awesome stuff. Hey Pam, did you pick a card of the day? I did. I did. Oh, okay. Um, you get? I got a warrior. How appropriate. I got the Knight of Pentacles. Ooh, tell us about that. Warrior on Veterans Day. Mm. <laughs> How appropriate. Who would have thunk? I have no idea. I, but what, okay, this is slow, steady growth. And I mean, right now with the way that the world is, this is what I was thinking when I was going through the deck is what advice can you show me i mean you were all going to interpret according to our personal filters and stuff but what can you show me how do i move forward how do we as humanity how do we how do we continue because sometimes it, it's just not feasible i mean you can't change the whole world but how do you change your little corner of it well one step at a time slow steady yeah. growth just take your time don't let anything rattle yet. You're not going to get unseated. You're not going to get bucked off. This is a nice, quiet horse for some reason. A war horse is, they can be. So consequently, what it told me was we're doing what we need to be doing. We're holding on to what we need to hold on to. We're replacing what needs to be replaced. We're we're fixing things as we go in each of our corners. And these, these effects ripple out and they join. And that's like the three of us and everybody else that that comes on board. We're all working towards the same goals. We have different approaches, but we're working towards the same goals. And that's what this card told me, which made me very happy. I love awesome. that. Oh, Jason in the chat room. Remember we were talking about throwing the cards? He said, I threw a bunch of flashcards on the floor today for my English class. Then they have to run and find the flashcard. The kids love it. <laughs> Uh, that sounds fun so we could do I that with it. the tarot cards we just like walk in fly, there's a client free. you walk in the room you throw them you go okay pick a card up fly be free yeah oh what'd you get for card of the day mary well i chose a tarot card from the tarot de maria celia by leonard jim narciso and i got the wheel of fortune Wheel of Fortune wow. card, and then I chose a crystal card as well and got Opal to go with that. Oh, I love that. And so, like, to me, you know, the Wheel of Fortune, a lot of times we say it represents change. And, but, you know, when it comes up in a spread, I'm always like, what is it? What's it turning towards? You know, how, what kind of change is this? And in this case, it's it's turning it's turning towards opal, and this is from 
uh, Rochelle Sharman's uh, Crystal Wisdom deck or whatever. And in this deck, Opal represents joy. And you have all these beautiful different colors in the stone. I love Opal. I'm wearing an Opal right now, actually, on, on a ring. And so I feel like it's time to really, like, you know, we all go through change, right? Change is the one constant, is the is the old cliche. But it's like, find the joy in it. You know, if you are going through something, you got to find the joy in it. You've got to find the happiness in it. You got to find that that feeling, no matter what it is. And you know, sometimes you know, it's just we go through something really crazy, and like the best thing about it is that we found a way to laugh about it. You know, and that's an expression of joy too. So look for the fun, look for the humor, look for the happiness, no matter what you're going through, because that matters. How you feel matters regardless of what you're doing. So that's what I got. What about you, Dex? What about yes. your cards of the day? Seven of Cups from Steel Wizard. There you go. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. So normally, you know, these things, well, I shouldn't say normally. I should say in the Wade Smith version, the, all these things up here are floating in a cloud, right? But I like how she's looking out the window and and not even necessarily looking at at the different objects up here which represent different possibilities and things like that you know seven is the seeker in numerology you know so i think she she's the seeker and so the message today is seeking um and then when you look at the numerology of the day it's 11 11 right <laughs> so you got well, master, master number 11 the master illuminator number learning and teaching also the entire day today 11 11 2023 you add it all up and reduce you get 11 whoa so that's really powerful and i want to say combined with this it makes a lot of sense you know so um i think it's a day of seeking it's a day of learning you know look at it's the big picture. It's not the minutia. It it's take a step back and mm -hmm. look at all the different possibilities before you do a little bit of learning, you know, uh, go on Udemy, see what, you know, what's the courses everybody is studying, right? Yes. Go, go on YouTube and other social media, what's trending, you know, and it'll give yeah. you some ideas. So that's what I got. I also oh. use the eternal seeker because I'm I'm wondering, okay, how do we approach this? And I got wisdom. Wisdom. And, and this deck, this deck was based on the major arcana out of the steel wizard. Very interesting. So I thought, yeah, I should pull one of these cards too, because it's feeling neglected over here. So there we go. We got wisdom. Wow. I have a question for you about the, the major arcana in the still wizard tarot. You yes. didn't stop at 22. No. <laughs> and I was just wondering, like, what was it that made you go further? And, you know, what, what did, did you feel like it was, there was things that the major arcana, like in the, say the Rider Waite Smith or something like left out that should have been in there? Like, what, what was the, what was the thing? What happened? <laughs> when I thought really very unique. Well, I got, when I got my first tarot deck, it was because my cousin and I were in Fort Worth, um, Texas, waiting on parts for the, the companies that both of our husbands and we worked for at the time. And the parts were not ready yet. So we ended up having to kill a couple of days, which was watching a slow death. But anyway, she was born and raised around there. So she knew the place like the back of her hand. And it was on a Saturday and the whole core of the city that she took me to was closed down on the weekend who knew it was brick streets um there was a, a fountain that wasn't running blah 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 but we went in between two buildings turned left and there was a sign hanging up on in the alley that read bell book and candle okay so we go in mm -hmm. and she does the vanna white choose one and i'm looking at this display case and there was maybe between 10 and 12 different tarot decks in it and this is 1970 eight or nine mm. I, I can't remember exactly how old my kids were <laughs> so I can't remember exactly when it was but um anyway I I looked at it and I said what do I need a tarot deck 
for. Like that's, I knew what it was, but I'd never even seen one. And she said, she walks over, she grabs my face with both hands and she gets right up in nose to nose with me. It makes me look at her with both eyes and says, because you need a visible means of prophecy. So you quit freaking people out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I grabbed, a, the only one that really appealed to me was the Rider Waite Smith deck. And I mm. thought, okay, mm. we get it back to the hotel. And this is where it got interesting. I laid them all out on my side of the room on the bed. And I'm looking them over and I said, where are the rest of them? Well, she kind of had an absolute, what the are you? And so she goes through them card by card. They're all here. I said, yeah, but there's no, there's no card for absolute truth. There's no card to represent young women. There's no card for this, for that. And she just said, read them. So I did. <laughs> And that wow. it 20 years later, yeah, it was 79 because 20 years later in October 1999, mm -hmm. she called me again and said, you know that deck that's been in your head for 20 years? And I said, yeah. She said, get it out, get it, get it drawn, painted, whatever you want to do with it. Because she was with a, a guy that was starting a publishing company and he wanted a signature tarot deck. Mm -hmm. And I started wow. October 1999 on the 21st of October and June 21st, they were delivered. Wow. That's, that's, that's and they're, less than they're a like, year. What year was that again? Um, 99 to 2000. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it, it they're, they're like 10 by 14. They were done with pencil crayons, as we call them in Canada. And I kept running out of yellow and, and white, because those are the ones I use for blending and softening and, and getting the colors yeah. just the way I wanted them. And so I wrote to the company and explained to them what I was doing. And could could I please purchase a a box of each of these colors because you know I need them. And yeah. I've got a boot box of everything now. And I'm I'm out of these, I'm running out of yellow, well, cadmium yellow, bright cadmium yellow, and and white. And bless their hearts, they sent me huge boxes of each color and said, Oh wow. Just let us just be sure you say that this is who how you did them. Because they weren't taken seriously as serious art colors because, but I liked them because they were softer and I could get yeah. deeper tones oh, with yeah. them and I could take them to work and nobody's going to smear them or nothing like that it's instead of working in oils like I usually did. But that's mm. how it happened was I needed more information, period. Mm. I wasn't yeah. getting the clarity that I needed because I felt like I was second guessing myself sometimes. And that doesn't work for me. I need solid something. And so yeah. I added those cards in because it takes you, me, it took me beyond duality into the realm of just spirit when it come to the majors. Um, I love that. Somebody said, well, isn't the Weaver just like the Wheel of Fortune? Absolutely not. Um, Soul Twins is nothing to do with the lovers. Soul Twins is about exploring your shadows. Uh, yeah. The lovers is about choice, you know, between what is sacred and profane in my book. So yeah. every card in there and the universe is not the same as the world because the world is a certain level of attainment where in the steel wizard, the universe represents that still point between two extreme powers. You've got, you've got this solid material world that we live in feet are on the ground and yet we're stretched as spirit into the universe. And so that it comes together in the human body and we fracture this and color our world with these emotions. But it's yeah. not the world card. It is it is that still point that we are whenever we reach that point where we're functioning as total beings. It's interesting because some decks actually change the world to the word universe. Yes. You know, and that's perfectly fine, I suppose, you know. But it's yeah. interesting. No, no decks have both. So this is really cool. Mine does. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. And then, and then in the court cards, you added um maidens of course you added the maidens can you can you tell everybody about about that and what those well, cards represent to you originally it was to represent young women because oh just use the pages no oh just use the knights no 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 just a thousand times no and so i came up with the maidens and it wasn't until i finished the deck that i even know what they were for and it just it was one of those okay now now what do i do with them now that i'm supposed to write this little Here's how to read the guidelines for interpretation. And it's the potential. It's the potential for each suit. These maidens embody that absolute potential. And so in a spread, if it's at the foundation, then you know that you've already tapped into it. If it's upside down, you well, I read reversal stacks, doesn't. But that means that you're not, you're not developing your potential. I mean, there's a multitude of things that you can do with this mm. now that I know what it means. 
I would I still use them for young women. Oh, I do. I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't, I didn't actually know about that. I, um, when I looked through the deck, I really didn't notice. I saw the maidens, but then I thought that, oh, she just changed the name of the pages to maidens. Nope. Pages <laughs> I didn't realize that you added them. So, so there's, there's maidens, pages, knights, queens, and kings. Five. Oh, no wonder the deck is this tall. I'm just saying. Anyway. <laughs> By the way, I did. I oh. I did what you said. I cut it in half, and I could rifle them then, and yes. then I put them back together. And I'm doing the overhand, you know, thing. Yep. And I also laid them all out in piles, and and you know, mixed yep. up the piles. I'm like trying different things, figuring out how to uh, <laughs> how to shuffle this deck. <laughs> hey, in the old days, well you know, the eighties, you know, they started coming out with, uh, <laughs> machines, uh, you, you know, of course the casinos all already, already had this stuff, but I mean, you know, it was advertised on, you know, only on TV, you know, you know, those kind of, you know, and you could buy this machine, you stick your deck in and it, it shuffled the deck, you know, for you. And I'm like, that's what we need. We need a tarot deck shuffling machine that'll get uh, on that. Yeah. Hey, I would be amazed if idea. somebody hadn't created one already at some point. I got to do a Google search. Maybe someone has it. I've never thought to know. look one. Why not? Absolutely. Let's see. Is there more? Um, ooh, more callers coming in. More callers coming in. If you have any questions in the chat, remember to pop them in there. Oh, Jason says. Wow, there could be a whole show about spiritual art. Hmm? Yes. Yeah. And when I he says a whole show, I don't know if he's talking about a, like a separate YouTube slash radio show or if he's talking about we should do an episode on spiritual art. I was thinking episode, but now that I reread what he said, he might be m meaning a whole show. Well, Jason will let us know. And Yellow out. <laughs> Yellow had the exact same question. Yellow was like, uh, why are there extra cards? Are they additional or supporting cards for the main deck? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they're Actually, part of them. They are, but I when I first, the very first event I went to was BATS in, in San Francisco. And this was, I think, in 2011. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I took some of the copies with me. It was the original run, which there is, I have one left. Other than that, they're out of print. There are a few people. That I still, still have my these. copy. <laughs> there you go. Somewhere, but, but somewhere, I, it's in my boxes. Uh -huh. I hear that. But what happened was, oh shit! And I lost, I lost my train of thought. You're at bats, and something happened. Oh it's, yeah, something I was in bats. At bats. Thank you. A lot of things <laughs> happened at bats. First of all, I ran into Tom Sheck, and and he's now officially my little brother, and he Major was taking Tom me around. Shick. Yes. Earth the Major Tom, who um, was taking me around and introducing me. And this one fella, and I'm not going to say who he was because we ended up being really good friends. He told me flat out that, you know, you're nothing more than a heretic for trying to change this. And I said, okay, you know, like, Ooh. you're hardly your opinion. Anyway, he was going on and on. And throughout the show, and then finally on a Saturday afternoon, he, he floats by and he said, do you have an extra copy of your deck here? I'd like to buy one. And I said, yeah, in fact, I'll even wholesale it to you. And he said, okay. He said, now my question is, can I take the extra cards out and just read it as a normal tarot? I said, yeah, because nothing, none of the numberings changed, nothing changed except the additions. And of course the court, court cards aren't technically numbered. So yeah, you could do that. Yeah. So about not? two weeks later, he posed and it was hilarious. He'd gotten back to where he lives and his First tarot client comes in and he's going to try to give this deck a run because he's already been seasoning it and everything else. But he's taken out the extra 10 cards. OK, mm -hmm. and he starts to to put the cards on the table and he gathers them all up. He said, I I had to put the other cards in because, quote, it didn't feel like I was playing with a full deck. <laughs> and I then he that. tells me, he said, I didn't think at the but time him in that, particular, you know, he's never playing with a full deck if you know what i mean <laughs> probably not but anyway anyway by the time it, it all kind of settled he thought well what are the odds of one of the 10 showing up in a spread he got 
I think he said three or four, I can't remember. Then he said, so for the first time in over 20 years, I've got to get out a book to read what they're supposed to me. So I know the guidelines. So I know what they're telling me. And I'm thinking, yeah. yes. but now he just loved it once he, once he gave it a run and yeah. Once and these he are gave so, it a run. Yeah. These are so interesting. So everybody can see here's one of them. This is the weaver card number 22 of the major arcana. Yeah. yeah. And then we have the full universe, book. which is also the, the image you see on the cover of the deck. That's card 23 of the major arcana. Truth. Okay. I love this. And I love that she's holding a mirror up. <laughs> yep. Look, and the rune is, look the right rune on the, the back of the I mirror. like there being a card like that because, you know, if that yeah. comes up, man, that'll really hit the client. You know, it's like. It mm -hmm. does. <laughs> and the rune on the back is the rune for self. Mm. In the, and in this the is card. interesting too. This is maybe, can you kind of tell us a little bit about this? Soul Twins. Oh, Soul Twins. Soul yeah. Twins is all about your shadow side. In other words, validating your shadow side because it took every millisecond of every heart. Her hair is becoming a dragon. I just know. Yes, it is. Absolutely. <laughs> Isn't that great? But the beauty of it dragons. is is that we try to deny what we did because it wasn't us. Well, of course it wasn't you, but in order to fully embrace who you are, you have to know who you're not. So you have to honor that part of you, the, the shadow that you think is so bad, you know, mm -hmm. lose the judgment. It had to happen or you wouldn't be here now. Simple. Yeah, I love that. And then the evolution card, number 26. Mm -hmm. I so, love how you see the different, you know, kind of the evolution of the of the person that we see in there. It's the evolution of ourselves. It looks right? like they're ascending and becoming a yeah. spiritual being. Yeah. Or hopefully we get wiser. We evolve in that way. And then the last major arcana is just gorgeous. The I am card. Or the cosmic yeah. chicken. That's what yeah, I the cosmic saw chicken. right they away. Have, was I, cosmic somebody, I don't know how many people have said, is that supposed to be a chicken? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Not really. It was just, it was my, it's my, it's my, my, okay. It's, it's like that old joke about, uh, the, the woman that walks by her daughter's room and she's really busy. She's like four years old and she's drawing and very, very serious. And her mom says to her, honey, what are you doing? And she says, I'm drawing a picture of God. And she goes right back to work. And her mom thinks about it for a second. She says, well, you know, honey, Nobody really knows what God looks like. And she said, well, if you'd let me finish, you know, and I that's show what you. <laughs> Hello. That's what I was thinking as I'm doing that, that drawing that picture. And it was just, I couldn't stop laughing. And yeah. But that's the colors. That. I like the colors. Yeah. And then the and then the maiden cards that we were just talking about. I love the <sighs> eyes of the maidens. They just strike me so mm. much. And that see the is... elephant. And the whale's tail in the background and over her head is an all-seeing eye. Those are things that are in there that I didn't know were there until Donna Lay De La Rose pointed them out. That's, it's amazing. And then here's the Maiden of Cups. Oh, yeah. oh by the way, Jason said I was right. He was talking about doing an episode on spiritual art. The Maiden of Wands and then What's the this? Maiden of Swords. And those, everybody, oh, wow. those are... Those are the extra cards that, that we've been talking about. And I think it's a fabulous um, addition to them because I, because I do think that tarot has been around since the 1400s and mm -hmm. it's evolved over time. And we've seen decks that have an added card here or an added card yeah, there. Yeah, one or two. But there isn't always like a real like a sense of why, mm. you know. And the maidens to me, especially like made a lot of sense. I'm like, oh yeah, you know, especially with the court cards. I mean, 16 court cards doesn't cover it all. Oh, I, I got two things real quick. One is that it, when I think back all the way to the very beginning, first time I ever, you know, looked through a deck, looked through a book on tarot, you know, that struck me. I didn't see like missing cards except for the court cards. I was always thinking the same thing. Like, where's the girls? You know, I mean, I, I just didn't understand why there was pages, but there wasn't, you know, maidens, you know, mm -hmm. to, 
It just didn't make any sense to me. But then I started learning about the structure of tarot. It's all about the structure. And there's a reason why it's 78 cards. There's a reason why all the different, you know, the 22 major arcana cards, because there's, uh, that's master number 22. There's a whole lot of numerology involved there. And so, right, you know, after I learned that, I was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, I, I can see why there can't be extra cards. But now, you know, jump ahead three or four decades you know now i'm like uh, you know maybe we do need more <laughs> i think Especially too. the maidens but, wait, I think you need to, but that's the yeah. first thing the second thing that goes with it is you know this whole time remember i said i've been trying different ways of shuffling the deck and when i get done shuffling a deck and i go to start i always uh cut it in the center and put the part on the bottom on the top and and pull off the top but the card on the bottom of where i split i call this the heart of the matter card and when i just did that look what i got the emperor card card wow. for structure <laughs> just what we were talking about look at the yeah. cards too they're color coded each of the yes. suits has their own color and the majors have their own color and i did that because i wish more decks would do that well, yeah. it was just one of those originally it was in the borders and so when it mm. came to doing this and oh my goodness the, I finally actually did just some mock-ups of what I wanted and sent it to the art department because I, I know it was a communication gap this is what this I need to see it this way this this has to be this way I, and I mean I'm happy to work with them they come up with some brilliant stuff but that was something that I wasn't going to I was going to bend on is Mm. is I need them color coded because when people first start learning tarot, they have to really stop. I need to, I need to be able to see at a glance what I'm looking at and then take it from there because then I can go into it, but I need to know where to start. And that made the difference to me was, yeah, exactly. Now, you know, a lot of people don't like the tower card, but I got to tell you, this is maybe my most favorite card in the deck because (laughs) I'm big into into dragons, you know, and if you're going to have a steel wizard, you have to have dragons if you have wizards, right? But no, you know, I was born in the year of the dragon, anything dragons, I'm all over it. My first tower deck was the dragon tarot. And I actually, I wish, I wish somebody would do a new one anyway, but, uh, yeah, get on that people, uh. But uh, I love this, you know, the dragon like squishing the tower in the center there, but you still have the lightning. Awesome. <laughs> you know, one of, one of my favorite cards is actually like the five of cups. Really? Because I love, you know, the, the feeling of it. You know, the five of cups oh. to me, you know, it, cups cards are about emotional, you know, content right you know um the five of cups that sense of like feeling let down and disappointed and you know i just i think that image like really conveys that sense of like oh oh you know there's something it's not else. over but there's... you know the the cup is over it's built the other person it's like the way the shoulders yeah, are like... the the you know the physical i got expression a question mary really says so much of it do that... i I, I don't want to look through all 5,000 cards to find that one. Can you, can you hold it up again? Tell me, um, so they're on the, sh- on the ledge, on the shelf of the window there, the windowsill, there's three cups upright, right? Yep. And, yeah. And I see one on the table. Where's the fifth one? On the floor. Right. On, on the, the floor, floor. On the floor. There's something else about that. I don't know if you guys noticed is in like the Wait Smith version. Three of three of the cups have been knocked over, and there's two upright behind the person crying over spilt milk card. You know, and if he would only turn around, he would see those two. This is actually more powerful because there's three full upright cups right there that he is not noticing, and he's he's you know crying over spilt milk over only two that have spilt over, which shows you how. Um, how we can react uh, or overly react to you know a small loss that really doesn't matter because there's all this that we're not paying attention to that we still have you know and especially so like because that they're, they're in the in that open window mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. because it's like you 
you can see like, hey, look, you know, there's so much more out there. There's so much more yeah. out there than the thing that's making you just like feel like that. But but Pamela, I just think, you know, the the way you do like the human figures in this deck is just so expressive and so helpful. Mm -hmm. Like I'm somebody who, you know, I I read be based on like um you know, empathically kind of like the feeling. And so like, it helps me to have a deck that like is expressive, even though I love mm -hmm. like Terrell de Marseille decks and stuff where, you know, the, the, uh, the minors aren't so expressive, but like just that, look at that expression on the person's face. And, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, that, that was your card of the day that Dax drew the, the seven of cups, mm -hmm. but you know, you're able to convey a lot of stuff. And so regardless of what the question is, when you pull a card and you look at the character and look at their expression and their body language, it tells you so much about the answer to the question. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Well, Jason and it. the folks in the chat are, are saying, oh, they're already planning out uh steel wizard edition four and <laughs> and they're talking about okay we need we need a trans card we need a non-binary and a gay card <laughs> well you know what they could be in there you just you're just not seeing them yet it i mean i've had several know. people ask me if the if this card is a woman mm. Mm. because of the expression and just there's a softness to the features of the night yeah. Interesting. And then you've got so, the maiden one where she's dressed as a knight. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, it just depends. Yeah. You know, it's what you see. It's what you need to see. That's right. what you're going to find. Oh, and one, one other card I wanted to mention was your empress. I love your empress. Thank because, you. yeah, she's pregnant, right? But so often, you know, we'll see the pregnant woman is the empress or whatever. And most decks, it's like, oh, you know, she's just this paragon of beauty and everything's so easy. It's like, have you ever been pregnant? <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> it is not <laughs> so wonderful every moment. You know, there's times like that where you're just feeling like that. <laughs> yeah. mm. okay. So I thought, okay, finally, pregnancy, like looking something like, it really feels exactly you know? yeah and she's kind of like doing this oh my god really like uh <laughs> tell me about pam tell me about the book like is, is this a new book written for this edition or and who wrote it did you write it yes yes and yes okay um the original book that thing was put together in about four days because <laughs> yeah, I, lo yeah. I lost my author at the last minute, um, we were getting ready to go to print and I, I, I wrote the book out and I sent it to the printer because this is all self-published. I sold my house to pr print that first deck. And uh, yes, I sold my house. I said, you heard that. Mm -hmm. um, and what happened was I got it sent and my computer crashed. And so it didn't get through. Long story short, Ended up the guy that was that owns the print company finally read the book because he reformatted it for me. It wouldn't hold the formatting in the computer that I borrowed, borrowed. So it was kind of a rush job, the whole thing through, but it gave him a working knowledge of tarot. And by the time we got that deck delivered, like by the time it was from the printers and on my doorstep, he had opened a new department for tarot and hired a graphic artist. And to this day, they have printed thousands and thousands and thousands of decks. OK, so it opened a door for them. It started that whole I mean, this was before Kickstarter. This was well, this was in the year 2000. So 20, almost 24 years ago that this all well, it was 24 years if you want to count 99. So it, it's been a while getting out there, you know, mm. and it was all about just getting it done. But this book, on the other hand, this one, this combines pretty much everything I could think of that needed to be mm. said and done with tarot. And when you like, it even goes through the myths, it goes through um, ethics. It, it even has a chapter here on what is tarot. So anybody that doesn't know, this is the best way I can explain it. 
and keeping a journal, all of it, it all goes through it. And then it, it has a, a blurb on the court cards and how to read them both ways. It has um, a graft in there uh, where you can, if you're you're drawing multiple cards, like if you have two to two to three kings or two to four kings in a in a spread, um, are they upright or reversed, et cetera, et cetera. It goes through everything that I could think of. And I also threw in um a little quick thing on how to interpret the runes it's just this is the rune this is the letter it corresponds to i think and this is the yeah this essentially what it stands for what it means okay and this whole this book i think took me oh my gosh it took a while but i wanted to make sure that everything if anybody had never picked up a tarot deck before they could pick up this book and this deck yeah, it's not a traditional tarot, but it's close enough. And by the time they're they're done, they would be proficient. I wanted that. And I also was very pleased with the fact that a lot of pro readers picked it up and started saying, oh, wow, this is, you know, this is so easy to read. I had so many people tell me they'd given up on tarot because they couldn't find their deck. And mm, yeah. they stumbled over the Steel Wizard and they're reading professionally again. So this was... All this That's kind wonderful. of feedback that I was getting. So when I, I got to put in this book together, yeah, I wrote it. Sorry, nobody else would write it for me. And um, just, I wanted to include as much as I could to give everybody as much as a of a leg up as I could. Mm -hmm. I think you did a phenomenal job with that. And I love the spreads that you included too. And also, you know, because my goodness, you sold your house. You did everything, you know, independently with the first edition. How did you like working with a publisher? You know, I, I always hear great things about Red Feather and, and Schiffer. You know, what was the experience like for you and, and how, you know, how, how do you, you know, allow other people to mess with your baby? You know, <laughs> it's a level of trust. Okay. Um, they approached me when it, when I was getting ready to, I was going to actually thinking about self-publishing the eternal seeker, but I'm mm -hmm. 72 years old. I'm, I'm just getting a little long in the tooth to put in that kind of energy. And I'm tired to tell you the truth. I am tired. So I would rather, rather go with a publisher at this point, simply because they've got the reach. They've got the backing. I mean, this thing is went internet. Well, the first one went international overnight too, but that wasn't the point. The point was it's, it's more affordable doing it this way for everybody concerned. Um, and plus the fact they, they work with you at Red Feather. They don't just here, this is what you got, take it or leave it. No, 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 no. They don't. They will go with you step by step. And every suggestion I had, they were more than happy to, yeah, let's try that. And because the vision, I mean, it worked. It just worked. And they're some of the best people I've ever worked with. I mean, ever, ever. I've made awesome. some really good friends with that with that company. And oddly enough, I went with, with Red Feather because so many of my tarot friends and acquaintances have been with them and yeah. love them and I thought what the heck let's let's give it a shot and I I never went anywhere else I didn't even approach another publisher after talking to them yeah happy no, with I've, everything. I've heard great things about them and just you know on the publicity side it's like they've been wonderful anytime we've asked for a deck or an author they've been oh, yeah. really great they're real professional mm -hmm. you know they like they make it feel like it's important like they're not just like oh okay. you know like some publishers it's like you're interested in a particular author a particular deck you want to have them on the show do an interview or whatever and they'll send you a box of like what they have new on their slate like hey let me you know it's like um I didn't really need all that mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I really didn't no. now I feel like oh god you know do I have to interview everybody you know but I loved how how professional and together they were you know we, we we had daniel loeb on to talk about his rotamundi uh tarot and it was they were just stellar to deal with so i thought okay there's something about these guys is pretty good <laughs> they are amazing i i will say yeah. that right up front and i i feel well okay i feel like they value not just my work i feel like they value me 
Aww, and I mean, wonderful. I was really, I had some questions about the contract. Um, I really did like with the first one. And so I just pointed it out. I sent a list of questions and they said, well, why don't we, why, why don't you talk to Pete about this? Cause Pete Schiffer, it's his company. And I thought, yeah. okay. So, you know, I mean, he owns the company and oh my goodness. And I, I don't, yeah, a little bit nervous, but honestly, that was one of the most seamless conferences I've ever had ever ever he cool. genuinely listens he's one of these active listeners who just he absorbs every word and then when you're done when when you're saying okay then he will lay it out just he just so explain do you have any other questions do you have any other concerns just he took all mm -hmm. the time in the world and I was absolutely stunned absolutely and deeply appreciative and so yeah, I mean that's who I went to whenever they. Well, Chris McClure, he was he was still running the Red Feather Division at the time, and he got a hold of me and said, "I heard that you're thinking about redoing the Steel Wizard," and I said, "Yeah, I am," and he said, "Can I have it? What what are you offering?" Well, pretty much the same deal we offered you on the Eternal Seeker. Sure, send me a contract. I mean, because that I easy. trust them. I do trust mm. them implicitly. That implicitly. Is that means everything it does <laughs> uh let me jump in because we got questions in the chat room uh Pamela, cool. what type of reader are you empathic intuitive based on numbers etc cetera, etc cetera. what is what's your greatest skill also do you do dream interpretations now <laughs> well i have yes yes to all of it um it just depends on who is who I'm reading for and what their needs are, okay? Because my job is to empower you to take the ball and run with it. That's what that's what it's all about. I don't want you coming to me every two weeks or even every two months or even, no, don't do that. I'm going to give you your information because this is stuff that you've already downloaded. My job is to interpret it and put it into kind of a story form for you so yes to all of the above sometimes i've got that noisy voice that's <laughs> never it's always been there and no it's not talking to me like a no it's not that but it, it's sometimes that it's just it's and it's a little bit of everything all rolled into one so do i have a specific no i go with whatever needs to be done at the time gotcha gotcha Let's see what else. Is there other questions here? Oh, earlier on, Yellow had said, I will take whatever the Tarot Today universe has for me to listen to. Thank you so much for making a huge difference in my life. The last reading was so motivating, and I thank you. Yeah, we did a, a reading for Yellow oh. last time. Remember, Yellow? We did a welcome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Thanks so much. So now she it means a lot to us. Right. And so now she wants us to just pull a card, whatever message we have. So well, I'm going to cut the deck here. Okay. So the heart of the matter I got is her as the maiden, the maiden of wands that we were just talking about. I love that. I love that. So yeah, you know, ho look how she's holding on to that wand too. It's a staff actually, but you know, you know, she's got the staff, she's ready. You know, it, it's that fiery energy. It's, it's like, you know, following her passions and so forth. And interestingly enough, when I pull off the top of the deck, I got the justice card, card 11. Again, you know, it's 1111, master number 11. Look at that. So whatever's going on with you, I feel that, you know, justice is going to be served, right? But remember, 11 is that seeker thing again. It's it's uh, 11 is um, the master illuminator number. And, you know, what is justice if it's not, you know, illuminating the truth, revealing the truth? You know, that's what I'm getting. So that's, it's like... Um, with it being 11 today, I think that yellow should be um, learning, learning and teaching. What'd you guys get? Did it? Did you pull a card? 
I pulled a crystal card. A oh, crystal, a crystal card. Go, Mary. Go, card. go. I want to go, go, go. I got malachite. Look at beautiful Ooh, malachite. That's pretty. I love, I love malachite's one of my favorite stones, a green stone connected to the heart chakra. And also, you know, in this card, you know, the message is about healing and it, it's kind of a funny message. I'm a healing machine <laughs> manifesting miracles. So it, it's like an affirmation for it. So whatever it is, you know, that needs healing, you know, just think, yeah, you know, I can heal this in one way or another. And healing isn't always about finding a cure, you know, mm -hmm. it's about it's about getting better improving fixing you know it's not about you know trying to reach perfection or anything and, and malachite is is a beautiful stone because you know those patterns that we see in it they're all different regardless of what stone you get and they're mm. all beautiful even though they have all these weird shapes and weird things going on so you know you think about that too yellow you're beautiful regardless mm. of what form you know your your little circles are in <laughs> what'd you get pam um well i drew the ace of swords from the steel wizard which means that you're on you just put your foot on the path to victory okay it's the ability to separate truth from bs okay this is the sort of truth that penetrates matter and informs it so you know what you need to do you know already is just a, right now you have a tendency to overthink it stop doing that just go with it because that's the way it works and ironically i pulled this one out of the eternal seeker now this one is the eternal seekers answer to justice card 11 okay which i found really interesting when dax pulled justice and it's it simply says no one is above the law the law is for all and no matter what side of the fence you're on what side whatever your perception and your perspective is you still know the truth of the situation don't overthink it just allow this to progress allow the truth to be seen allow allow the law to work for you that okay? card looks so wide to me i don't know which one the one in your left hand it's because it's an oracle card and it's that much wider. Oh, wow. Yeah. I love big cards. I big hate cards. shuffling them, but I love big cards. I don't know why. I think it's because it's bigger pictures. You can see more. Yeah. Yep. I love that. I love that. It's oh. funny. My my stack of decks here is like still wizard on top, eternal seeker right here. <laughs> I'm like bookended with Pamela Steele's work. <laughs> I do not I do not know how to pronounce this person's name, Cloesa. They're from Brazil. Uh I, I would like to know if Willen 10 1995 uh sorry 1985 will will be declared innocent in the courts. Oh, okay. Hmm. That's a yes. That's, no. a, that's a different question. Let's see. I'm going to see let me cart I'm going to cut to the heart of the matter. I got the moon card. Okay, so this is saying that it, you know, it's just not clear. There's a lot of okay. things still in the shadows, but let me pull a card off the top to see for an outcome. Oh, hey, there you go. Lover's card. So card of choice, but uh lovers is card is card six in numerology, six is success. So I I would say yes. That's my that's my interpretation. Mm -hmm. anybody else pull a card or hold on no i pulled out my pendulum my <laughs> highlight pendulum and oh, it's what'd really, you get? well it's very interesting it is like very small circle and there's like you know it's interesting it's kind of like the moon card you know especially like the colors in how oh I, yeah right yeah this is the one I got in Tucson when I was with you, Dax, in that oh crystal shop. God. And I saw it, like, as soon as I walked in the door, I'm like, that's my pendulum. <laughs> that is so but cool. Very barely moving. So I feel like, to me, when a pendulum moves like that, you know, because I, I use them to answer just flat out yes, no questions like this. When it's barely moving, a small circle, it's like, yeah, but I feel like there's more to the story. 
Mm, and so there, there might be, you know, you know, some kind of quantifiers in, you know, what the final finding is. But that's what I get. What about you, Pam? Did you pull a card? I actually I did that really quick yes no spread that um and the first one that came up was the the maiden of swords reversed which means there's a pot the potential is there but right now it's not being expanded mm. on it's not being explored okay the second card that came up was the page of pentacles again reversed but that means that there's information that you don't have yet mary that's bang on what you just said and this is playing uh, yeah. out because until the rest of you need you need more information bottom line okay mm -hmm. and lastly the the card is right now a definite no if you can go ahead and get the rest of the info out there then your foundation is going to be solid then it'll be a yes but at this point you need to cover your other steps in order to make it happen yeah that's okay. i feel that's similar to what i got with yeah. the potential for success yeah. but it's it's kind of shrouded now with the moon card yeah. hidden and you have to un uncover that you know Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, some kind of evidence proving him innocent, kind of thing. Something yeah. Like yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You just we're haven't thought have of it have, yet, Pamela. We're going to have to have you back on the show because there's so much more to go into, and we're almost at the end here. Uh, let's go over to the phone lines and see if we can grab a phone call here. Who's been waiting the longest? Eight five six. Caller eight uh, eight. Area code eight five six. Are you there? Hi, how are you? Oh, good. good. How, how are, are you? you? What's your name, hon? Where are you calling from? Uh, Rosemaria from New Jersey. I heard Jersey, but... New was, Jersey. What was the name? Rosemaria. Rose oh, Rosemaria. Rosemaria from, from New, New Jersey. Jersey. What do you want to talk about? Uh, a lot of things are going on, so... I know, like, the manifesting and all that happy stuff so with me it's like it's not working so i don't even know what the heck is going on why it's not working with my part so why is it your manifesting sense. work working <laughs> it's not working it's not working so hmm that's a cool question your wish isn't clear what you're wishing for basically what this card's telling me is that you're saying i want and in order to make it happen you have to you have to say i choose okay i choose to experience and go from there and and once you've chosen your experience you have to know not it's, it's like having an expanded vision board not only can you see it but you know what it smells taste touch you know this you know what it feels like and you're just creating a place for it to exist but right now the clarity isn't there so that's why you're having trouble in my opinion mm. i got hey there's still hope though Ooh. i got the, oh, yeah. i got the star card got the star card so the hope is still there but um pamela you're gonna have to help me with this one this is one of your cards uh oh your extra cards <laughs> Card oh. play to the weaver. This puts you on your path. Your path is definitely, you're definitely on the right path. It's ah. just that sometimes with the weaver, you can get your threads in the tapestry entangled with others. And so make sure that all of your threads are clear and that you're not tangled up with somebody else's emotion, life, or anything like that. The weaver is very, very blunt and very straightforward, really. I want to ask you something real quick. And then we'll get Mary's take on the question at hand. But I just got to ask this because I'm a numerologist. Um, 22 is the master builder number. And it and it fits the concept of the weaver perfectly. Was that on purpose or accidental? It just happened. I, it this just whole, happened. This whole Isn't that deck. amazing, though, how the universe works? You yeah. weren't even thinking that. You were just yep. numbering the cards. And yep. the weaver, which is a builder, ends mm -hmm. up as master number 22, the master builder number. Yep. None of this was what planned. What you get? Me? Um, yeah. You, you know what's interesting is I got the strength card. Strength. And, and so to me, you know, what this is saying is it's like, okay, I'm, I'm working on this manifesting stuff. I did my part. 
where is it happening? Where, where is it happening? You know, with the, the strength card, it's sometimes it's like, look, it reminds us that we can't force anything to happen. Or we can like work with the universe mm -hmm. and hope that it is working with us. But usually what it is, it's like within ourselves, like with the strength card, you know, a lot of times it's also about our inner strength. It's about, <laughs> it's about the beast within, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and learning to, you know, what I tell people to do, it's like reclaim it, you know, reclaim that primal energy, name it and tame it. And name so it, that, tame it. I love that, you know. So that that's always working with you, that that energy is always working with you and not, you know, you know, something that we try to force, you know, or that we're not coming off as like a roaring lion when we're just a sweet little kitten inside, you know, <laughs> we've, got to, we've got to find the balance there, you know, so I, so I think, you know, it's not that you're not doing the right work or you're not doing anything you know not doing anything wrong i think it's like that i think it's outside of the manifestation manifestation work that you're doing and it's really on the inside it's like if we sit there and we say oh i did all this and now it's not happening now it's not happening you know we need to kind of let go of that expectation and be good with where we are with where mm. things are so that we're in that flow where we're not trying to force it we're not trying to expect it to happen but we take what comes we take what comes naturally you know so that's what i get awesome i hope that helped you out and thanks for the question rose maria yeah well appreciate it thank you enjoy the rest of your weekend there and we yes. are at the end of the show. I want to say, if you're watching an archive, there's a link to the third edition of the Steel Wizard Tarot on this page you're watching this video on. Yes. Uh, and check out the Tarot Guild as well. And I'm going to have a review up where you can see more of the cards. And I'll talk more about the book probably tomorrow. Oh, get on our social media and, you know, we'll put that out all over the social media for you folks when Mary's got her full review and everything out there and there's a short uh, flip through, right though. We have the, yep. that one. Yeah, there's walk already a walkthrough. There. There's already got a the walkthrough. Walk through. Yeah. Walk through, flip through. Well, we're just going to have to have you back on Pamela. Again and again. Yeah. Steel wizard <laughs> part three or part two, Ooh. third edition, but part two of our discussion. <laughs> There's Excellent. more to the story. I feel that there's more to the story. Paul Harvey. Yes, Paul Harvey. Paul Harvey. That. And that's the rest of the story. That's Bye, right. everybody. Have Bye. a great Bye, weekend. Everybody. Happy uh, Veterans Day to all the veterans out there. Good night, Mary Ellen. Good night, John Boy. Good night. Good night, Pamela. Bye, Pam. Good night. <laughs>